Welcome to this screencast to have a look at Branch Cache. And Branch Cache is a feature of Server 2008 R2 and works with Windows 7 clients. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to start by installing Branch Cache on a server. And as you can see, I just do this through the normal Add Features wizard. Uh, there's nothing to configure apart from ticking the little checkbox to say Branch Cache is the feature that I want. So a couple of mouse clicks and a short pause which we've shortened for video purposes and branch cache is installed. So easy enough to install it. We need two command lines to configure it and if I start a command prompt the first thing I'm going to do is just have a look at the status of branch cache and I do that with the netsher command so netsher branch cache show status it says right now I'm a client I'm running in local caching mode and what I need to do is to add an SSL certificate now I'll apologize for this command it's not the world's friendliest but I add a certificate to support the connection and then the next step is to toggle the connection to being a hosted server instead of a client and you can see it sets two firewalls for firewall rules for me uh, it uh, configures the service and restarts the service and now if I uh, do the show status command again but this time I put the all command on the end of it we'll get a bit more information so I get configuration data at the bottom there that tells me whether I've enabled all the right firewall rules and so on. Uh, I've got the amount of disk space available for the cache but when I scroll up a little way what we'll see is it says this machine is configured as a hosted cache. So now I'm ready to host cache for clients on this computer. So I need to switch to a client to do the next step. So I've switched computers and over here on the client, uh, if I do that show status command again, you can see here it says I'm a hosted cache client and that was set by group policy. And if I do show status with the all command again, I can scroll up and I can see that the hosted cache is the server I was just working on and that's been pushed out to me by group policy. So when you see it says hosted cache client set by group policy that's been sense set centrally and the client knows not only is it to use a server but it is also knows where to get the server now I'm just starting performance monitor here so we can see some of the statistics from the client and we'll come back to this in a moment but what I'm going to do is just use the HTTP part of branch cache. We can use it for HTTP or we can use it for normal SMB file shares and I'm going to get a file from a remote server uh, over a slow link and I'm going to save that file locally and we'll watch how long this takes. While that's happening I'm actually going to pop over to my server and have a look at the same performance monitor stats on the server and you can see bytes coming in uh, from the client, so bytes that are actually coming into this server, it's ticking up but it's not kind of going in steadily, it's coming up in big steps as the client downloads blocks of data that make up that file. So the files come down, it took 24 seconds in total, and now I'm going to uh, go to the other client and see what the performance is like there. So we'll do the same thing and again we can see on the second client we've got the same branch cache settings that came down by group policy. We're going to the same website and we're going to try and download the same document. So we'll just tell it where to go. And you can see that that was quite a bit quicker. That actually came down in four seconds. So we'll have a look at the statistics and we'll actually see what's happened there. So this is the server's view and you can see we've got bytes that have come from our cache, bytes that have come from the server to us and then total bytes that we've actually served out. 
So you can see those numbers are, uh, are actually equal. Bytes from cache and bytes served are going to be the same number. And then bytes from server is what's actually being fetched over the network and delivered here. If I have a look at the first client, you can see that it's downloaded some stuff from the server and it's also pushed some data over to the, um, the caching server. And finally, if I look at the client that benefited from the cache, you can see that it downloaded some stuff from the cache and it just got a little bit of information from the HTTP server where that file lived. Now, I mentioned a couple of times that the settings for these clients came from group policy. So let's just have a look at the domain controller for this domain and we'll have a look at the group policy settings that has actually enabled, enabled branch cache on these clients. So I've got a, uh, a group policy object here and it's called the branch cache GPO. It's bound to the branch clients uh, OU and if I have a look in branch clients you can see I've just got my two demo computers in there and if I have a look at this group policy object you can see that there are a couple of things that need to be set uh, the first one here is under network we find branch cache and we can set the different options for branch cache so you can see uh, branch cache is enabled and uh, it's enabled in hosted mode so it's both turned on and in hosted mode and I've specified the server and then also in order to make this work I need to configure some firewall rules and you may have noticed those uh, on the um, Netsha diagnostics box so let's come back to uh, the Windows firewall rules and in order to enable that we basically have to put on two inbound and two outbound rules so we put that information out for the client and the client's then able to uh, share information with the server. Uh, without those rules, basically the client and the, the client will pull down data from the from the uh, original file server, but it won't be able to get it up to the hosted cache server. So here you go. Here are the uh, the rules that that's actually referring to. And so what we've seen is group policy configuring all of this lot and how we configure the branch cache server and how two clients work for HTTP. Now we'll do a separate show for how this works over SMB, but the principles are identical.